Today, we're going all in on consumer advice. So if you have a gaming laptop that runs hotter than the surface of Mercury, this is probably one of the ways that you'll get some of the best gaming temperatures. Now, before you ask, no, it's not gonna be particularly practical, and 99.9% .9 of people should never do this, but those temperatures sure are sexy as hell, and that's the only thing that matters. Now, first things first, we need to get a baseline reading of just how bad the temperatures are on this Razer Blade 14 and what the gaming performance is like so that we can see how much of a difference it makes and just how proud we should be of ourselves. So with that, let's see how bad it really is. With Battlefield 5, both the CPU and the GPU hover at around 90 degrees Celsius, sometimes actually going over 90 degrees Celsius, but then the fans go ham to try and control those temperatures, all of which is a big no-no. After about 10 minutes of running Ida64 and Furmark, we're sitting at about 92 degrees Celsius on the CPU and about 86 degrees Celsius on the GPU, and with those core frequencies. So let's open up this razor blade and see how much we can drop these temperatures and what kind of overclock we can get. Now that we've revealed the innards of the laptop, we need to have a quick discussion about how we're actually gonna cool this situation better. Now, my first idea was to try and use an AIO on each of these dies. The graphics card is this one, and the CPU is that one. The problem with AIOs is that you can't just kind of rest the block on the die because there's not gonna be enough pressure from the top of like the weight of the cooler to actually maintain decent thermal contact. As you can see here, you can get an AIO block down onto the CPU, but you know, there's nothing really keeping it there. So we're probably gonna have to use just normal tower air coolers. Here with the tower cooler, it's, it stays in place and the weight of the cooler pushing down does help maintain thermal contact. But there's so little clearance for two coolers next to each other. So I'm gonna go get another small-ish tower cooler and then see if we can actually fit them next to each other on this laptop. Now this is the other cooler that I thought about using, but as you can see here, it's got these big ears that mean that it doesn't, it doesn't quite fit in there. So I'm gonna see what other options I have. Now this Reven Justice 2 space-wise just fits on there. The problem is it's not very stable, like it falls over really easily. That CPU die is actually a really stupid shape, so it means that it's a really unstable base for these coolers. Now this is starting to look really stupid, which means we're slowly getting close to a solution. If you look down here, they're both actually making contact. Um, so that's a good sign. This, this may work. The only thing is uh, I need to get both of the fans blowing in the same direction so that they don't death match in the middle there. And then we may be good. This, this, may, be, this may be a working solution to the razor blades heating problems, cooling problems. Uh, so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean them up, I'm going to do a fresh thermal paste application, set the laptop up in a way that we can plug it into external stuff, and then we may have the ultimate razor blade gaming setup for maybe six years ago. getting very close to the point where we can actually switch on this monstrosity. Now, I just want to make it clear again, this is not a good idea and you really shouldn't try it at home. There's a bunch of metal close to things that can short out down there and you could very easily destroy your laptop. Although, I did try my best to make sure that nothing's touching anything that'll short out. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's looking okay. We've got decent looking contact. I did actually end up taping the two coolers together because they were leaning away from each other like this. So now they're nice and secure on their respective dies. And then on this side, I've got an Octua NFA 12 that's just blowing onto the actual motherboard uh, to help cool like the power delivery and the, the memory modules down there and stuff. So that's just additional cooling. Because there's a bunch of extra fans, I'm actually having to use an external power supply to power uh, the three extra fans that we have. Uh, yeah, so that's probably not going to impact portability too much. Um, I guess now's the moment of truth. It is going to be very precarious getting to the power button because it's in the middle of the laptop. So I'm going to, this isn't going to be a fun process, but let's see if I can get it on without knocking the whole assembly down. Oh, it's not plugged in. Oh, I'm so dumb. Oh, I think we got it. Yes, we do. So we've just started and we're sitting at about 73 degrees Celsius already on the GPU. So it's, it's definitely running cooler than it was before, but it's actually not as cool as I thought it would be. When I push down on the cooler, the temperature drops by a good 10 degrees. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so there's clearly a mounting pressure issue. So what I thought is maybe if I just drop like this on there, <laughs> okay, apparently that's not enough weight. Uh, let me let me go find someone else because again just Look at that Look at that temperature drop. Holy crap. Okay. I need to find a way to mount this better Because if I let it go It just rockets straight back up. Okay. Um Wait, is it just if I lean it back? Okay, actually, all I need to do is I need another bit of tape and I just need it a bit tighter. This is terrifying to do while this thing's running. Like if something falls over, it could kill the, the laptop. So again, this is a really bad idea. Okay, so I'm gonna just lean the cooler back. I mean, that's way better. Literally just that bit of tape made a 20 degree difference to the temperatures. The GPU is sitting at uh, 51, 52 degrees Celsius, which is almost 40 degrees Celsius less than the stock configuration. And then the CPU is more than 40 degrees Celsius cooler. So that is a huge difference in temperatures. So what I'm gonna do, ooh, ow. What I'm gonna do now is some benchmarks and then I'm gonna see how far we can overclock this, this whole thing. So I just added another bit of tape and we actually managed to drop the temperature even further, which is pretty funny. That didn't seem to help the gaming performance that much. These results were pretty much within the margin of error, although the 1% lows for both of the games were better, and that does make sense, because we're not running into thermal limitations here. There's a more stable core frequency, which leads to a more stable frame rate. Now, after this slight victory, I guess, I decided to try and overclock the CPU and the GPU because we have so much extra thermal headroom available. Now this, unfortunately, went even worse than just the normal gaming results. Well, kind of. After about an hour of trying to overclock the GPU, the best I could do was plus 50 megahertz on the core. Uh, with the CPU, we did a bit better. We hit about an extra 200 megahertz in the actual boost frequency, which for Battlefield 5 made a little bit of a difference. But with GTA 5, it did about as much good as a fart in a hurricane here. I don't know why, but the results are actually worse somehow. I did retry them and they were still worse. And then I tried a little bit to fix it and then I very quickly lost interest. But there you go. Apparently overclocking doesn't help much. So with that, after all of that effort, we, you know, managed to cut our temperatures in half, but it made no real world gaming performance difference. And if anything, we managed to make a laptop even less practical than a desktop PC. Because if you just bump this table even once, your whole life can just come crashing down in, in, in a pile of flames. 
So yeah, I think this was a, a very useful video. If you like useful videos like that, please do subscribe to the channel, like the video, and check out my gaming channel and my stream, both linked in the description below. Some, some fun things happen on both of those. And until the next video, bye-bye.